Hi, everyone. Instead of beginning today with a story about me or about my project, I'd like to begin with two stories of Muslim patients of Middle Eastern descent who came to a clinic I worked at last summer. Uh, I'll begin with Tariq's story. Tariq was an Egyptian man who had recently immigrated from Egypt to Northern Virginia, which is where I grew up. He had immigrated just the week before he came into the clinic. He knew absolutely no English, spoke only Arabic, and he was staying alone at a church, which was providing him funding for food and shelter for the time being. He came into the clinic with a letter written entirely in Arabic. Now, I had casually mentioned in conversation to the clinic staff about a, a couple weeks ago um, that I had taken two years of Arabic in college. That by no means meant I was fluent, but <laughs> they insisted I go and try to translate what he was saying and what was written in the letter. So I went with my shukran and afwan. And <laughs> Um, managed to glean that this man was seeking medical attention. He had some sort of heart condition that he had in Egypt, and he was being treated in Egypt and wanted to continue his medication schedule in the US, but didn't really know how to go about doing that. So this man wasn't treated on that day. That's because the clinic had a policy that for two weeks, the patient had to go through an application process uh, to evaluate their needs, and then after the two weeks, a provider would see them for the first time. So why did that happen? There was a language barrier. Um, because we didn't uh, understand what the patient was saying and because we couldn't communicate to him adequately the clinic's policies, the patient was confused about the policies and about the fact that he would not be able to be seen by a provider for the next two weeks. Recent immigration played a large role in the confusion because he didn't know how to navigate the local healthcare system properly the same way he would have known in his native country. And lastly, the, the patient had no formal support network. Because he was relatively new to the area, and because he was staying at a church that was providing him uh, food and shelter for the time being, he had nobody to counsel him through the local healthcare system, nor did uh, he have anybody to translate for him, or no family either. Now on to Yusuf's story. Um, Yusuf was a patient who came around the same time. It was Ramadan. Yusuf was fasting, and he was also diabetic hypertensive, and elderly. Now, in Islam, as you may know, you do not have to fast if you're sick. However, this man was not aware of that, or there is a pressure, especially among the elderly, to fast even when you are sick, just because it's considered to be a good thing. The provider had no idea what to do, because she had never faced a patient in this situation before. She, had never, she didn't have a good idea of what Ramadan was, um, and I was the only Muslim at the clinic at the time, so I had to explain to her uh, what Ramadan was, and she adjusted the medication schedule accordingly. Uh, so why was this an issue? There were the cultural differences that the provider didn't have a good understanding of. There was a lack of experience and knowledge on the, provide, or, uh, on the provider's end. Um, the clinic didn't have staff that really recognized these issues, these cultural and religious differences that played a factor in treating Muslim patients. So, these stories re really form the inspiration behind my project. My name is Nader Ijaz, and my project is entitled Building Bridges Through Healthcare, Muslim Patients and Cultural Competence. So, um, uh, just, yeah. so this is really the anatomy of my presentation. Um, I'll first be discussing the provider's perspective and challenges providers face in um, giving uh, proper healthcare to Muslim patients then discuss the patient's perspective and challenges patients face in accessing proper healthcare. Go over what cultural competence is and why that can help. And lastly, my specific project and how um, that's really going to play a part in the Northern Virginia community. So on the provider's end, what are some of the challenges? I'm just gonna highlight a few because I don't have time to go over all of them, there are many. Inadequate knowledge, and not only that, but inadequate resources to access more knowledge if they are more interested in learning about culture and religion. Language barriers, as we've already discussed. And lastly, systemic problems, like the policy, the two-week policy that I discussed earlier. And the patient's perspective. Uh, they, 
they cannot na adequately navigate through the local healthcare system if they've recently immigrated to the area and they don't have a good understanding of the local language. There's problems with interactions with the opposite gender, especially among female Muslim patients. Um, uh, taking their clothes off or um, revealing themselves to male providers, along with discussing sexual health issues, especially to male providers, becomes an issue. Uh, and preconceived religious beliefs. Like I mentioned earlier, this patient was fasting, even though he didn't have to because he was diabetic and hypertensive. So now I'll move on to cultural competence and what it means in the US context. So uh, cultural competence, I guess first, what is it? So I'm a scientist, I like long definitions. Um, so there are three points I'd like to cover. Uh, one is understanding the importance of culture and society in forming a patient's beliefs and behaviors. And secondly, considering how those factors might affect uh, the different levels of healthcare delivery on the provider's end. Lastly, devising interventions, which is kind of where I want to come in, to ensure quality health care for all diverse patients. And cultural competence has been shown to improve patient outcomes in patient satisfaction, compliance, continuity of care, and patient provider communication. But in the US, it focuses mostly on black and Hispanic patients, which makes sense because there are major minority groups in the US. But there are growing minority groups in the urban centers, and we do have to pay more attention to them. So kind of looking at a case study of Northern Virginia, which is where I was working at this clinic, about 40 miles outside of the nation's capital. So my project involves connecting local mosques to local free clinics in order to provide the services the clinics need in order to ensure proper care for Muslim patients. So the clinic already has a number of advantages. It's, it's, it's been established for years. There, it has successful programs for Spanish-speaking patients. This particular clinic had about a 50% Hispanic patient population, and about 40% of the patients were Muslim, which is pretty high because it's in, in a relatively urban area. And it has stable sources of funding. Now, the mosque, on the other hand, has been trying to establish a clinic for years, but it doesn't have funding. So what I'm advocating is the mosque cooperating with already established clinics in order to better serve Muslim patients instead of trying to reinvent the wheel by establishing its own clinic. The mosque does have cultural knowledge, translating services, religious leaders who can counsel patients with any religious problems they might encounter, and many Muslim healthcare professionals. So what does the cooperation look like now? There's one Muslim doctor from the mosque who volunteers week, uh, weekly for two hours at the clinic. Now, what I'm advocating is increasing this, this cooperativity, uh, getting both the mosque and the clinic to collaborate in order to facilitate cultural competence when dealing with Muslim patients, and to provide services that might look like translating services, cultural competence training for the physicians and nurse practitioners at the clinic, consultation services uh, with any religious issues that the patients might face, and counseling services uh, for patients to help them navigate the healthcare system. So what's the bigger picture? So I'm kind of, uh, I, I want to advocate that healthcare can be used as, as a platform for improving U.S. men or relations. Immigrant patients understanding the U.S. healthcare system and American providers understanding Muslim culture is a way for us to bridge that gap, to bring both MENA culture and U.S. culture closer together. And lastly, I'd like to state that I focused on Muslim patients in this presentation just because of the theme of this conference and because of my own personal experiences. But I'd like for this presentation to be encouragement for us to pursue cultural competence in the treatment of all patients of all diversities and ethnicities. Thank you.